Hello, ukulele friends. I hope you're out there spreading the ukulele love. I have another superheroes interview for you today. I'm really excited because this is another foreign interview. I have Jamie Houston in New Zealand, and he is the CEO, founder, so, sole proprietor of Duke Banjo Ukuleles. And oh my gosh, they sound great. I'm so excited to hear more about these ukuleles. Um, I'm, I'm really tempted and I do not have ukulele acquisition sy syndrome. So, uh, <laughs> so when I'm tempted that, that says something. So, um, Jamie, you've been identified as a superhero in the ukulele wow. community. Yeah. Uh, what do you think your superpower is? Well, you know, my t-shirt says, uh, you know, I play ukulele. What's your superpower? <laughs> perfect, perfect. Where'd you get that t-shirt? I, I, make, I make them and sell them. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> I need one of those. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, no, my, my superpower, apart from playing the ukulele, uh, is, is really sharing the love of making music and on a ukulele, so, or a banjo lady, as, it's, as, it, as it may happen. Mm. And you've gone to some pretty good lengths to do that. I mean, you wound up with a company. How did that happen? <laughs> well, you know, it, you got to be careful what you wish for or what you pray for sometimes because, you know, it, it, it comes to pass. And uh, it all goes back to 2006. Um, and that's when I first discovered uh, a ukulele or the ukulele, you know. And um, I was sitting around a barbecue with some mates. I was living in Australia at the time. The accent is a little bit different to the Kiwi or the New Zealand accent. Um, hopefully you can understand me. But over there, it's a little bit more twangy and... Um, anyway, there was, a, there was this guy and he pulled out a little colored ukulele and of course he started playing and we were all singing around the barbecue and it was just fabulous. So, and we're all, you know, two or three of us were there, how do you do it and how do you play chords and how hard is it? And I didn't play guitar, you know, I'm, I'm a keyboard player, I'm actually a jazz pianist and a piano teacher and I play saxophone, but I don't play guitar. I don't play a, a, a I, I didn't either. yeah. <laughs> So, um, so, you know, so I was really interested and um, to cut a long story short, a few of us got together and there were 12 of us at the inaugural meeting of the North Coast Ukulele Club, which was in Byron Bay, a little tourist town in northern New South Wales, which is on the east coast of Australia. So, and that went on to become a club with about 400 people on the mailing list within a year. And we would have 80 or 90 people turning up every month to the local pub. And oh, it was wow. just unbelievable. I know, we had all these people coming, oh, you know, I've been playing ukulele for years, and, but I was too scared to play it in front of anyone. I thought they would laugh at me, and then we called them closet ukuleles. So all these people were coming out of the closet, you know. Because <laughs> 2006, you know, I think that's around about when um, Jake Shimabukuro re released that video of playing in, in Central Park, you know, while my guitar gently weeps. And that kind of, you, could, you can almost say that that was the beginning of this third wave of, you know, the, the ukulele um, popularity. So anyway, um, you, you asked how I came to buy the company and, and, and so on. So that cut a very long story short, I was running a music shop. We sold lots of ukuleles. Um, I in increased the range and to include banjoleles. And I fell in love with this little banjolele that had a four inch drum. It was a tiny little thing. Oh with a, with a, that's small. <laughs> it was really loud and obnoxious, but really small oh. and, and I loved it. Yeah, it was really loud. And I would take it to the, to the ukulele club and people would say, shush, it's too loud, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so I fell in love with that instrument. Um, and I, I guess it's just in the back of my mind, I, I, I always wanted to um, have a banjo lady. I didn't buy one. I didn't buy it. I was just sold lots of them. So, you know, so eventually, we'll probably get to the story later, later on in the interview, but yeah, eventually I ended up buying the company. So, yeah, it was a dream come true for me. Well, that's, wow. And so how, how long have you been the owner of Duke Ukulele Banjo, or Banjo Ukulele? Uh, yeah, I uh, bought it in August last year, August 2018. So, so this yeah. is a pretty, pretty new endeavor. And um, so are you making those in New Zealand? Well, the story goes, the gentleman that uh, I purchased the company from is, is based in New Zealand. He's in, up in the north um, in Auckland. Um, and he tried making them in New Zealand, 
So he was getting parts in from overseas. He was making some parts, making the necks here. And he had a workshop set up and he was working with a luthier. And it just turned out that A, the, they couldn't make all the necks the same because they didn't have the right type of, they didn't have a CNC router. So they were trying to make them all by hand. So of oh, course they right. weren't all okay. the same. Uh, and B, um, the cost was just too high. The cost of getting things all the way to New Zealand and then the cost of the people that were working with them, you know, to pay the wages, it's a lot higher than paying wages in, in a country like China. Um, so he eventually went off to China and tried a couple of different factories. And by the time I bought the company, he, he was onto a second factory and he refined the process and everything was in place. So I really just had to take over. Uh, and um, and we make them now. We have a special factory that we use. They're, they're actually a really big factory. Um, they specialize in high-end ukuleles and banjoleles. Mm -hmm. So they make, um, you know, I saw ukuleles there from lots of well-known brands. I won't I won't say them. Um, it's probably probably not appropriate to say what they are, but if you watch the, um, the video of me touring around the factory and showing you um, the, the the, the tour of where, the, where they're made, you will just sort of get little sneak peeks of these boxes on the side with a name on it that you'll recognize. Um, and so they're a, they're a fabulous um, a bunch of people to work with. And the manager there is, is a highly skilled maker. Oh, God. That's, well, that's good to know. And so any kind of challenges uh, working in this international uh, commerce environment? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I'm, I am now a manufacturer, right? I'm, I'm not... That's effectively what I've become, or, or at least the owner of a company that manufactures overseas, you know, and we're talking, I don't know, 6,000 miles away or whatever it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's not just around the corner. So, so yeah, lots of challenges. Um, and even though the gentleman I bought the company off, his name's Ed, even though Ed had been there um, on about six or seven occasions and ironed out a lot of issues, you know, when we started a new batch, you know, I sent send money for them to start a batch of 300 banjoleles, the, the Duke 10. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they start sourcing the parts and making up the drums and attaching the hardware. And then the whole actual process of putting all the pieces together to, to, to make the actual finished product is only about two to six, but it's a four month lead time from when they start sourcing the bits. And they order the Aquila strings come from Italy and it seems that Aquila aren't particularly fast and it can take two months to get, you know, 300 <laughs> sets of strings from Italy. All these crazy things I had no idea. Like, why can't they just send them? They take four days. You know, no, no, no. <laughs> um, anyway, so, yeah, so, so, and then I have a lady there um, whose name is Ying Ying, um, and she's my production manager, and she kind of does the liaising with the factory, um, and she, her whole world exists for people like me who, who need to deal with a Chinese factory. And, of course, the factory, not only do the people there not speak English, the owner of the factory you sort of does is pretty good but they don't speak english um but the other thing is is that the um the factory doesn't even have an english name i mean th these aren't places you can look up on google you know yeah, they, they, so these are all in chinese just, characters just, yeah everything everything just exists for, for, for people that are in china so i can't just waltz into china and, and do this you know i have to have someone like like ying ying to do it for me so you know there were issues like they sent me a, a drum with a head on it and the tailpiece on it to um oh no i put it away actually i should, should have brought it out but so it's half a duke 10 and they said this this is the drum we're making and of course i'm like well tailpiece is a little bit too high and this is round and so you know you can imagine how long that process can take to get things shipped to new zealand and then me to and then trying to send photos and videos of what needs to be changed and then then the drum head manufacturers uh changed change design oh and the model was no longer available so then all of a sudden the tailpiece had to be modified to fit around the drum head because it was about a millimeter higher you know just little things like this and, and they were trying to use the old tailpiece and i'm saying no no that's not going to work we have to so you know yeah so so all sorts of little intricate things that you wouldn't even think about you know right as, as a player as a teacher that doesn't even enter my mind so wow yeah. <laughs> That's very educational for me, and I hope that my viewers out there are enjoying it. In fact, if you hit that like button and the subscribe button, and I currently have a giveaway going on, and it's t-shirts and strings are involved, so uh, who knows? You, you might wind up winning one of those uh, superhero uh, t-shirts because, I mean, I'm known for my crazy t-shirts. I didn't wear one today. 
So, like, subscribe. Show us that you spread the ukulele love. I'm learning so much from doing these interviews. Hope you are too. Okay, well, um, man, I, 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 I probably will never look at a ukulele the same after doing that. Well, have a look at the, the video on, on, on the website, all right? Okay. And there's a link that I put, I gave you that link to put in the description. Right, um, we'll have that down below, folks. Yeah, if you click that link, it goes to the Duke Uke website, but it's a specific page, and I've got things on there that we're talking about today. So there'll be a link on there to the factory tour video. So okay. you can actually have a look at me walking around. I've got my camera in front of me, and, you know, yeah. Excellent. Now, something else that you do that, that I really honor and respect in my superheroes is that you're really trying to make the community better by doing charitable work, and that's something that it's near and dear to my heart. I just started that journey for myself this year and have gotten 11, 12 ukuleles into the uh, hands of people who really could use them. Tell me a little bit about what you're involved with, Jamie. Well, there's a lovely lady um, from the Midwest. I'm trying to remember if she's in um, Minnesota. I, I forget where she actually lives, but she's in the Midwest somewhere. And uh, her name's Laurie Kalavig. And she works um, with, an, well, she set up an organization called SGUB, which is Survivor Girl Ukulele Band. Um, and basically what she does is she fl uh, lives in Kolkata in India for three months of every year. And she's done it for several years in a row, um, where she works in a, in a, um, a, a, sh a shelter for, for girls uh, and some boys that have been rescued from um, prostitution and from human trafficking. And she's basically, healing them with with love but ultimately through the use of music and ultimately using the ukulele so you know she works with Carla and she works with a few brands and she gets um, donations of ukuleles uh, and strings to take with her uh, and it's getting to the point where she's done it for a few years the girls that she's helped to um, heal are now coming back in to help her teach new girls that are coming through which is absolutely fabulous um, yeah that is um, wonderful Oh, it's amazing. They're making they're making friendship bracelets. Oh, there's your dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're, Both of them human. <laughs> yeah, they're making friendship bracelets. Well, they're they're actually not bra uh, friendship bracelets. They're um people are using them to tie around the headstocks of the ukuleles that are made by these girls. They're hand stamping um, cards that that she sells. Um, and so she fundraises by selling things at ukulele festivals and sending them out all around the world. Um, but ultimately. Yeah, she she's just fundraised. She needs about twenty thousand dollars a year, which doesn't to me doesn't seem like a lot to do what she does. Um, and that's and she fundraises for that each year. So as a company, we support her um, as much as we can. And everyone that gets a Duke Ten, there's a, a full color brochure and a flyer inside um, explaining explaining what Laurie's doing, um, so you can support her in doing that. Okay, well, Laurie, I hope you're listening to this because uh, I think you need to be on my superhero interview series too so get in yeah. get in touch with me and and i want to see how i can uh collaborate with the amazing giving that i have experienced just in you know in a very infancy stage in running the youtube channel so that's awesome well something else that i'd like to pick your brain about there jamie is um i teach absolute beginners in fact uh just in the past two weeks i've launched 20 absolute beginners and that are adults with um, some with no musical experience and some that have just retired from teaching uh, teaching general music for over 20 years. So yes. what kind of advice would you give for an absolute beginner? <laughs> well, I think, I think we're lucky in that we play an instrument that's relatively simple to learn or to start learning. Obviously sure, the journey yeah. can you know the journey can get on and on and you can be an advanced jazz guitarist and, and jump onto a ukulele and do amazing things but if we put that aside and we go well you know what what are we dealing with here and well we're dealing with four strings and we're dealing with three chords that you know are relatively simple to play obviously if your hands are a little bit um, you know um, stiff or you've got very large hands then you need to make considerations for that but in reality that's what I liked about it when I first discovered it. And I think most people do. It's kind of like the C chord has, you know, one, one finger down on one string. Um, but I think, I think probably the best advice I could give would be to try and 
get involved with other people as quickly as you can. Not so that you can feel that you don't know enough, but so that you can feel the sense of joy and sharing and love that comes from being in a group of other ukulele people. You know, like we, it's just it's just a whole other world. I, you know, I haven't been involved in another um, community group that is the same as a bunch of crazy ukulele players. You know, all sitting there trying to trying to play and keep it. You know, and and. You know, so just play a, play a song, and if you can only strum one chord out of four, just strum that one chord out of, mm-hmm. chord out of four. You know, um, don't try and keep up. Don't worry about what they do. Just get involved. I think it's, it's one of the best parts, and that's why I go along to the local club, because I just love being part of it, not so that I can, you know, show off my skills, because I don't really have a lot of skills. I'm really just a strummer, you know. Yeah. I might own a company that makes them, but as I said at the beginning, I'm a pianist first and foremost, and a saxophone player. So the ukulele really, for me, is, is, is a good strum along. I'm not a finger picker. I'm not some amazing player. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's the joy of playing. I've, I, I, I'm classically trained as a flutist. I directed steel drums. Ah, <laughs> wow. Done, done a lot of pitch percussion, but, yeah, I, I, I can take my ukulele everywhere. <laughs> So yeah. that's perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that tidbit because that certainly aligns totally with what I believe in with what the aloha spirit of the ukulele brings to the world and, and to the people that make music with it. So that is perfect. Well, I hope that people have really enjoyed this interview. I certainly have. I probably will never look at a ukulele the same. I'll have links down below so that you can get in touch with Jamie. I'm also going to include a link um, so uh, Katie Deneur in Music One has a review of the uh, Duke 10 banjo ukulele. So take a look at that as well. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And I have a giveaway. So if you leave me a comment, that'll get you an entry in the giveaway too. So um, trying to hit 600 subscribers. So until then, and oh, Jamie, I can't thank you enough for negotiating such a great time dis- distance here. Here I am in Fairbanks, Alaska, and there you are in New Zealand, and, and just figuring out how we we're going to do this was, was a bit of a yeah. challenge. So thank you so much, and uh, thank you for reaching out to me, and I am thrilled to get to know you. Come on up to Alaska anytime in your winter, my summer, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and until then, friends, we'll see you later. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.